Hello everybody, my name's Jim Mackey and I'm the Animal Behaviour Management Officer for the Zoological Society of London, overseeing training and enrichment at our zoos. Today I'm representing the IASA Animal Training Working Group as a core member. This presentation is all about the multiple benefits of animal training and how an evidence-based approach can promote positive welfare and improve public perception of our zoos. So why do we train animals in zoos? Well, it's because it promotes positive animal welfare. And there's plenty of science to support this, but we want to continue to provide evidence. In this example here, you can see two zebras at ZSL London Zoo that are being routinely vaccinated using a dart gun. Now, this is a traditional method and it's expertly done by the brilliant vet team at London Zoo. But as you can see, there is a significant physiological and behavioral change when these animals are darted. Now these two have been separated from the herd, so only these two are affected. But if they were in a larger group, then every single animal would be affected whether they were darted or not. And there is an alternative. Here you can see exactly the same routine vaccination being delivered through hand injection, and there is no change to the animal's behavior whatsoever. So we asked our vet nurse intern at the time to record the breaths per minute both before and after darting and before and after injection and also do some ethograms of any behavioural change. And the animals that were darted showed some change in behaviour including biting and kicking and other undesired behaviours that we saw in the video and also a very significant increase in respiratory rates both the day before and after darting and just before and after darting. And this was a very significant um, bit of evidence. While the um, ethograms of the animal that was hand injected that year show very clearly no change in behavior and also a negligible increase in respiratory rate. And so this was clear evidence to us that there was um, a benefit, a clear benefit to training for hand injection. Some further evidence that we prepared at ZSL was in conjunction with the Royal Veterinary College where we asked the student to compare the different methods of induction, for example, darting or manual restraint, compared with hand injection and measure the time it takes the animal to go to sleep during the anaesthetic events. And we used um, historical data of lots of different animals such as big cats, bears and primates. One of the species that we studied was the ring-tailed lemur and in this video you can see what it looks like when the animal is hand injected under manual restraint. So this animal has been uh, boxed and taken to the vets and is hand injected under manual restraint. Now let's see the alternative and in this video you can see the alternative. This is a, a lemur that's been trained for hand injection and although the animal feels the hand injection it still continues to engage with the trainer. Now this uh, lemur was also trained to enter a transport crate so it could go to sleep comfortably before it was moved to the vets but as you can see it fell asleep before it even got there which was really clear evidence that when animals are trained for this procedure their time to recumbency is far quicker than when, you're, when they're manually restrained. And the study concluded that this was true of every single animal that we looked into. And this was really good evidence that training for hand injection promotes positive animal welfare. There are so many benefits of training animals in zoos. And during this presentation, we're going to take a look at some of them more closely. Let's start with daily husbandry. In this video here, you can see a group of meerkats that are responding to an audio recall that allows the keeper to move them off exhibit and into this space where there's individual transport crates that they um, are trained to enter. Brilliant proactive care because this means that whenever the animals need to be moved around the zoo to the vets or exported, they don't have to be manually restrained. It also means that you can weigh individuals, which gives great information and is a really progressive form of animal care. Helps the vets and nutritionists. The recall uh, behavior can also to be used just for fun outside uh, to show off to the public and also to um, provide enrichment. Now weighing in animals is a really good um, process. These two hornbills um, have lost condition so the vets asked us to, to, to weigh them whenever we could once a week if possible and this provided brilliant data for the vets to monitor their health care. In this example you can hear a whistle being blown 
and that's an audio recall sound uh, for this Philippine water monitor. Now this Philippine water monitor was a little bit aggressive towards keepers when they were servicing the enclosure so rather than use of, use of aversives to keep that animal away we decided to teach it to come off, off its a bit into this cage that we had specially built where it received some positive reinforcement for staying in this area yep. while the keepers safely serviced the enclosure. Another benefit of animal training is cooperative medical care. Training animals to cooperate in their own medical care has a profound impact on animal welfare. Here you can see a cheetah being trained for a blood draw at Whipsnade Zoo. And we often train our large carnivores and primates, but we don't okay, often yeah. train birds. Birds can be trained for medical care, such as this military macaw being hand injected, and we can even use trained behavior with reptiles. And in this example, you can see a Galapagos tortoise having a blood withdrawal um, using some classical conditioning. And the alternative to all of these processes is a form of manual chemical restraint. So this is a great way to train our animals for medical care. Another benefit of training is enrichment and increased activity. In this example, you can see a group of penguins that have been trained to follow a keeper and exhibit the natural porpoising behavior. And as you can see, the side effect of this is that our audience here at ZSL London Zoo absolutely love it. So we're engaging with our public as well as enriching our animals. We can also utilize trained behavior to engage with the public and to educate them. In this example, you can see a group of macaws that are trained to fly free at Whipsnade Zoo. Fantastic enrichment for the bird, but also really engaging and inspiring for the public to see these animals exhibiting natural behaviour. But it doesn't have to be in a theatrical setting. Here we have a group of Red River Hogs that have been taught to respond to a recall sound, and the keepers love this behaviour so much they decided to share it with the public. And then we can do a keeper talk that shows off natural behaviour rather than just standing still accepting food. We should also be utilising trained behaviour in our formal education programme as well, just like in this example from Copenhagen Zoo. Here you can see some guinea pigs that have been trained to voluntarily participate in the education session. So rather than using manual restraint to pick these animals up and place them on children's laps, the, the keepers at Copenhagen Zoo taught the animals to jump into a little crate and then um, used a piece of canvas to place the animal onto the child's lap. So this is all on the animal's terms and even while they're being stroked and used in these education sessions they're taking food reinforcement as well. Now it's not just with guinea pigs that they do it at Copenhagen Zoo, they even do it with chickens and this fantastic video shows how engaging it can be to be in close contact even with a humble chicken. Now look at these children's faces, they're so inspired um, to be nearby to these animals and one of the reasons I think is because I think everyone loves to see how animals learn and how animals behave and how they can respond to training and this is a great message to share with our public. Training can also help solve behavioural problems. And the example I'm going to use is with Asiatic lions at ZSL London Zoo. We had three lionesses that were born at the zoo, then they were moved to Whipsnade temporarily while we built a brand new enclosure. When they returned to London Zoo, the new facility was very different and there were certain stimuli that they weren't used to. For example, people walking above them. Now, rather than habituate to these novel stimuli, they actually became more sensitized and as time went on they would show more and more undesired behaviors such as charging tail wagging and even repetitive pacing and we decided to use trained behavior alongside an enrichment program to help modify these behaviors and to help the animals habituate to the new facility so that we could open to the public um, safe in the knowledge that these animals were comfortable in their new habitat So we started off by training for name recognition. We taught them their name and when they looked up, they would be positively reinforced. So the sensation of looking up and seeing people changed from being something that they didn't like to something they were looking forward to. We then tried
trained for audio recall and we use that recall behavior to ask these animals to voluntarily move through the whole exhibit whereas before they were only staying by one area where they could escape back to the inside dens now they would use the whole um, habitat and this would help with enclosure usage and help with enrichment so that we could uh, help these animals habituate to this new facility then we could open to the public and the public started to see some wonderful behaviors. It also helped that some plants grew too, which is always great. And we had some really brilliant close contact between our visitors and our lions. Another beneficial side effect of the training was when we opened to the public and Queen Elizabeth opened the facility. So we generated enormous amounts of public awareness and publicity, which supported our conservation work in India. Introducing the Animal Training Working Group. We have members from all across Europe and we have international advisors too. And our experience is with a wealth of different types of animals. And our chair is Annetta Peterson, who's in the center of this slide, working with a sea lion. And how can we help you? Well, firstly, we have an extensive education program and we work closely with the EASA Academy to achieve the EASA Academy aims. The first course that was set up by the group was the Understanding and Managing Animal Behaviour by Kirsten and Annetta, and there's been several of those done over the years. A newer course, which we've done twice, is the Reevaluating Animal Training course, which is in collaboration with Sally Binding, the EASA Animal Welfare Training Officer. Our newest course is the Trailblazing Trainers course, and the first one of those was done at Valencia last year and that is a pre-conference workshop we plan to do that at every conference going forward unfortunately at Leipzig this year we can't but it was all prepared so thanks very much to Leipzig for uh, offering to host that now at Valencia there was some brilliant um, subjects covered and also some live animal training opportunities such as uh, teaching lemurs to accept medication through syringes our education program has had real big impacts across Europe. For example, in this video here, you can see a chimpanzee having a blood draw. But importantly, it's done by Vigelis, who attended a course by Annetta and Kirsten many years previously, and then took whatever he learnt back and changed the way that they care for their animals at Attica Park, including these brilliant medical care behaviours. Vigelis actually shared that video on our Facebook page. Our Facebook group at the moment has 1,200 members and counting. It's a great place to learn about different types of animal training, for example, with the iguana here and also the meerkats that you saw earlier. You can also find out about the latest uh, resources in animal training. And it has some of the papers that have been written by members of the group, such as this one, which was all about an un addressing undesired and repetitive behaviors. And what is the future of zoo animal training? Well, we can certainly progress certain areas, including in supporting our conservation research partners. So for example, at ZSL London Zoo, research scientists ask keepers to attach collars with new GPS tracking technology that was developed at the University of Swansea to help interpret data from collars that were attached to dogs in the in situ project in Kenya. And this video shows you how we did it. You can see that we attached a crate to the outside of the enclosure and taught the dogs to enter the crate and to put their head in this special application unit and then we attached the collars which we then left on for four weeks which enabled us to collect really important data that is helping inform the conservation work that our research scientists are doing in Kenya. And we should be more inclusive too. Reptiles and fish can be trained and we should encourage more keepers to get involved in our training programs. And we can even be training our domestic animals too. Here at Whipsnade Zoo, a uh, herd of badger-faced sheep that uh, graze the site of special scientific interest, so maintain native biodiversity, have been taught to follow a recall sound. So rather than herding these animals from <laughs> one paddock to the next, they're actually recall trained. And as you can see, they respond with amazing enthusiasm. What fantastic animals these are. On behalf of all of the EASA Animal Training Working Group, thanks so much for listening. Thanks to all the keepers and vets who appear in the presentation. And a quick final word from Annetta, which is we should look at training as an investment in the public perception of zoos. 
by sharing this amazing work and cooperation with the animals in our care. Thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.